Hey Logo Designers, welcome to Logo Package Express 3. Today I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of how to use the Logo Package Express extension. After you have successfully installed Logo Package Express, you can open it by going to Window, Extensions, Logo Package Express 3. When you first open Logo Package Express, you will be shown the activation page. You will need to put in the email address you used to make your purchase as well as the license key that came with your purchase. After activating the extension, the Logo Builder screen is the first screen that you will see. By default, there are three component windows on the Logo Builder screen. Logo, Logo Mark, and Logo Type. These are the logo components that are most common. To start making a logo package, you simply need to open your final artwork file. Here I have a grid of six different logo variations. I'm going to start by setting my primary logo. I make a selection and click Set Component in the Logo window. Once a logo component is set, it will be processed and recolored. There are five default color schemes, and then there is also a master logo artboard at the top of every column. You may set components from your master artboards or from any other open document. I'm going to set the logo mark from the master artboard. I make a selection and click Set Component in the Logo Mark window. This will generate another column with the logo mark and all of its color variations. We'll repeat the process for the logo type as well. I'll click Set Component and the color variations are generated. There are a few settings on each logo component window. In the upper left corner of the thumbnail, we have a background icon. Pressing this button will change the background of your component from white to black. You may want to do this if you have logo artwork that is very light color and you need to be able to see it clearly so it will stand out on a black color better than a white color. You can always toggle between these options. There is a refresh icon in the right corner of the thumbnail and this is for resetting the component. Maybe you didn't grab every piece of the logo component correctly or maybe you accidentally set the wrong piece. Either way, you can start over by clicking the refresh button. You can see we have removed the component column and you are ready to set again. I will make that same selection and set the component to bring it back. Finally, there's the recolor icon in the lower right corner. This is a paint bucket. When you press this, it will remove all other color variations except for the full color. You would want to use this if you're setting a component that does not need to be recolored into different color variations. Again, this can be toggled on and off. The colors will be regenerated when you turn Recolor back on. You can set as many different logo variations as you would like. You can set a custom logo variation by going to the Add Component button in the blank Logo Component window. When you click Add Component, it creates a new component that's untitled. Give it a name. I'm going to call this Stacked Logo. All component names are totally customizable. Maybe you don't call it a logo mark, maybe you call it an icon it's no problem to change these titles. All unset component windows have the ability to be deleted as well. If you don't have a logo type or logo mark, you can delete these default components as well. All you need to do is press the trash can button, and you can see that that component has been deleted. I want to set that component though, so I'm going to bring it back. Now I will go to my other open artwork document and grab the stacked logo variation. I'll click Set Component, and a new column will be generated, just the same as all of the default components. I'm going to keep this logo package simple, but to add even more variations, simply scroll down and continue to click the Add Component button until you have as many components as you need. There are two tabs on the Logo Builder screen. We've been looking at the Component tab. Let's take a look at the Colors tab. When we go to the Colors tab, you can see the default color schemes that we generate for every component. Every color scheme can be turned on and off. In this case, I'm not interested in making a grayscale version of the logo, so I'm going to uncheck grayscale. And as you can see, that row is removed from the logo grid. If I want to bring it back, I simply recheck the grayscale checkbox, and those colors will be regenerated. But like I said, I don't want grayscale with this logo package, so I'm going to uncheck it. There is a checkbox at the bottom of this section that says Remember Color Scheme Settings. If you are a designer who often doesn't create one of these color schemes like grayscale or inverted, you can uncheck these, and with the Remember Color Scheme Settings box checked, these color schemes won't be generated when you create new logo packages. 
The next section in the Colors tab is the Custom Colors area. Click Add Custom Color Scheme to create a custom one color scheme for your logo. It will open up the color picker, and I recommend that you go to the Color Swatches option. From there, you can see all of the colors that are available to you. I'm going to choose this teal swatch and click OK. And a new color scheme will be generated that recolors the logo in the color that you selected. You'll want to give your color scheme a name. And then custom color schemes can also have their backgrounds inverted the same way that components can. If we click the background button, the background will change from white to black and vice versa. Custom color schemes can also be deleted. If you have a brand color that wasn't in any of the logos you already set, you can enter those values directly and get a custom color. I'm just going to pick something arbitrary for this example, but you can use any color that you want in a custom color scheme. Additionally, you can add as many custom color schemes as you would like. I'm going to delete this blue color and bring back the teal color I was working with before. Next up on the Colors tab is the Inversion Settings. This is just a slider that allows you to say what color should be turned to white on the inverted color scheme. And the final setting is the ability to export the background colors with your logos. The background colors that are currently displayed on these logos are simply so that you can see the logo artwork on the artboards. But if you check the Export Logos with Background Colors button, then the background colors that you see here will be exported. Logos will have a white background or a black background depending on your settings. Next is a quick overview of the settings. Settings can be found by going to the gear icon in the upper right corner of the extension. The first setting tab is the Files tab. The Files tab is where you decide what file formats are exported with your logo package. Additionally, you can customize the logo package folder structure at the bottom of the Files tab. Next is the Names tab. You can change the spacing and casing of the folder names, as well as the file names. There are some elements of the file name that can be updated here as well. Next is the Scales tab. The Scales tab is where you can set your scales for exporting JPEGs and PNGs in your logo package. Add as many scales as you would like, and change the units to pixels, points, millimeters, centimeters, or inches. Additionally, you can also choose a resolution of 72, 144, or 300 ppi for each scale individually. You can set a dimension by width or height. Web logo scales will be applied to both JPEGs and PNGs, while print logo scales will only be applied to JPEGs and the resolution is locked at 300 ppi. Next, we have the padding settings. This is where you can add space around your logos. A more in-depth tutorial of the padding settings is available. Finally, the info tab. You can follow the links to see more tutorials, contact support, or become an affiliate for Logo Package. License information is also kept on the info tabs. We see the email that's used for the license, the ability to disable the license from this computer, and to see how many license activations you have used. When you disable your license, you will be taken back to the activation screen and your license will be deactivated. Deactivating your license frees it up for use on another computer. To get back to the Logo Builder screen, we can press the Back button in the upper left corner. I like to review my components one more time before I export. Everything looks good, and we are now ready to export our logo package. When you press the Export Logos button, a modal will pop up asking you for a client name and a directory. I'm going to call this project Logo Demo, and I will choose a directory. I'm choosing a folder called Demonstration and clicking Open. Next, you will decide whether you want to export logos for print, web, or both. I would like to export both, so I am ready to go. I now click Export Logos. The next screen tells us that we are prepared to export print logos. It advises that we check our color swatches and look over the artboards one more time before we export. I'm ready to export these files, so I will press Export Print Logos. Now the logos will be processed. We will see an export indicator that lets us know that the logos are exporting, and we can see the progress on the left side of the screen. The amount of time it takes to export logos will be different depending on how many logos you've set. The extension will now show us our logo package in progress. As you can see, several folders have been created and many logos have been exported for print. We're now ready to move on to our web logos. Again, we will be encouraged to check our colors and make sure that they're correct. Everything looks good, so I'm going to click Export Web Logos. 
the export indicator comes up again, and we carry on with the process of exporting web logos. When all of the web logos are complete, we are again shown our logo package, which is now fully exported. The final export screen gives us two options. We can reset the extension and begin work on a new logo package, or we can upload the logos that we've just exported to the Logo Package Portal. Logo Package Portal is a Logo Package product that is an asset management tool where you can store your logo files and share them with your clients. This will open the Logo Package Portal extension, which comes free with your purchase of Logo Package Express. It will create a new project with the client name you selected during export, and then it will automatically update all of your logo files to that project on the Logo Package Portal web app. Our logos have been uploaded, so we can click Return to Projects, and with Logo Demo selected, I'm going to click Open. This will bring me to the Logo Package Portal project page for Logo Demo. Here, you can share the project with your clients using a share link, and they will be granted access to this project page where they can search for their logos by using our simple and intuitive filters. Clients can view logos by color and select a use for their logos. The Logo Package Portal will automatically provide the right format which your clients can download by pressing the download button in the lower right corner of any of the logo thumbnails. Now that my logo package is complete and uploaded to Logo Package Portal, I will reset the extension and Logo Package Express is ready for your next logo package project. I hope this tutorial was a helpful overview of the capabilities of Logo Package Express. Thanks for watching.